Hello, hello, welcome back. My name is Saban, and this is another episode of Terraria Journey's End. And this time, we're going to be getting the Vampire Frog Staff. And I'm going to show you how I did it, and how you do it without even coming in contact with a zombie merman or a wandering eye. Okay, not one bit of contact, because you don't want to, because I'm in master mode. I'm doing a whips and summoning playthrough, and I haven't got any summoning weapons at the moment, so I really need this. And also, he's really cute anyway, so why wouldn't you want him? So I'm going to show you how I did it. The only world requirement that you need actually to spawn a blood moon is to have a certain amount of health. And that certain amount of health on the wiki says about 120. Now I had 120 for quite a while and I didn't get one single blood moon. So I would say in my opinion about 150 is usually enough. So as long as you get that then you'll have a blood moon spawn. The next thing you'll need is a fishing hut. Now my fishing hut is a little bit more extravagant than probably the normal one. All you need is a a box of some description hovering above a pool of water which needs to be a certain amount of blocks which I'll put on the screen and then from there you have a hatch at the bottom I've seen this I've kind of combined a couple of ideas and added a couple of my own is to add this little section at the bottom which is kind of like a cage and then this little funnel here with a platform with a single platform missing now it's quite significant as well is you have these two blocks missing with platforms as well and that allows you to actually access the cage so you can attack what's in it and you can also fish through it. Now the next thing is to protect this box that you have. Now putting a block just in the center of a closed door is enough to stop anything from getting inside and that means you get zero hits from anything from the blood moon. From there, the only items you actually need is a fishing rod of some description, some bait, so then you can actually fish and then once you've caught the merman or the wandering eye and he's caught in your cage you can then attack him with a boomerang or with arrows now if you have a setup similar to mine don't worry if the merman doesn't go straight in so if he misses it or if he jumps out or whichever then the merman will eventually jump in there and actually get stuck and the wandering eye does sometimes get stuck around there you just open the door and you can attack it the reason for the missing block there, the Wandering Eye, does go up through the platforms. But then the platforms are there to stop the Merman from getting out. So a quick way to actually kill the Merman or the Wandering Eye once it's in the cage is to use grenades. Now, you need the Demolitionist for that. And it's a very cheap item to actually buy and it does a lot of damage, which I can show you. Now to use the grenades once something is caught in the cage, you need to be away from the cage because as soon as the grenade touches the enemy, it will blow up. And if you're close to it, you'll get hurt as well. Now you've got to position it correctly to aim it straight through. And if you click right in the center of the platform, you'll get it straight through into the cage. So the platform is three blocks high and the cage is three blocks deep. So I'll put these blocks at an angle here, basically because that kind of traps the wandering eye and it stops things from jumping out. So something that I've added to 1.4 is something called a bloody tear, which is a rare drop from anything in the blood moon. So if you attack everything, then you may be able to get one. And what that does is it actually spawns the blood moon. So the only way to use the bloody tear is to wait until it hits night time and then just have it equipped and then consume it. That will spawn the blood moon event. The other extra thing that you can use to try and help out your fishing is when you collect some chum buckets, you can use those and just throw them straight down through into the water and that will increase your bait power. So I'd say to try and get as many merman and wandering eyes in the cage as possible. And the only reason being is once you throw the grenades into the cage, it will hit all of them at the same time. So you use less grenades to kill them all. So here's where I've got the vampire staff. Okay, so there we go. We've got the staff finally. So excited to use it and I can't wait to use it in my playthrough. I have got also other items as well because the money trough, I've got two of those that dropped with that, which I'm going to use as well because they're very handy. And 
the Blood Rainbow as well. I got managed to get two of those on top of that. And a bunch of other things as well, which is just the normal um, sort of items that you get from fishing and the chum bucket. But the one that we're more concentrating on is the Vampire Frog Staff. And not only that, I've got a masterful one, which I'm really excited about because it gives 18 plus damage and 5% knockback. Knock and yeah, it's probably one of the better ones that I could have got and I'm very lucky to get it. So let's get on to actually seeing what this guy looks like. How cute is that? He looks so cute, I'm so glad. It was worth the slogging to get him. So let's see how well he works because with the whips, you can direct him to a certain enemy so you can avert his attention and he kind of sticks with them as well. <laughs> so it does a lot of damage it that's definitely something that's there there's a nice little turtle there let's see if we can find someone else so he only attacks the one with the little circle around which is cool so you know exactly which one he's going to be attacking otherwise he'll just attack everything anyway by looks of things but he does some good damage and if i can get more than one it would be even better but for the time being, he's very cute. And the sugar glider could just watch him do it. <laughs> but that's going to help me in my playthrough. Especially in master mode because it's a bit, it's a bit of a nightmare in this mode. I'm not going to lie. So there we go. I hope that has helped you get your own frog staff. And if there's any additional tips, then please write them in the comment section because it might help me out or anybody else that might be watching this as well that's looking to fight the blood moon. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and my build videos as well. I'll put a link on the screen and the description if you want to see all these builds that I've been doing just recently because I've got a lot planned for 1.4. So look out for that. So thanks for watching. Join me in the next one. Bye.